Welcome to the CE Pro Podcast. I'm Executive Editor Arlen Schweiger. Ah, HDMI. It's been a popular but sometimes puzzling topic for custom integrators for quite some time now. The interface, of course, became even more robust with the recent advancements created by the 2.1 spec. And this week, we're seeing the Sony PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X next-gen gaming console releases as the first source devices that require the 2.1 cabling infrastructure. So for this week's podcast, we talked to HDMI Forum President David Glenn about how integrators can ensure success installing HDMI 2.1 systems, including where they can find the properly tested and certified cables. David Glenn, President of the HDMI Forum, thanks for joining me today. Good to be here, Arlen. Thanks. So, David, just for starters, uh, the HDMI Forum, why don't you tell our CE Pro readers uh, who might not know what you guys are all about and, and what you do in terms of uh, influencing HDMI? Sure. Well, we're an open standards organization, and really, we own developing all future versions of the HDMI specification. So, you know, HDMI 2.1 is, is the latest uh, version we've developed, and, you know, we're continuing to to work on the future uh, of HDMI and, and you know, more, more will come in the future. All right, and in terms of HDMI 2.1, uh, obviously that spec was announced a few years ago. Uh, it's certainly been a big buzz in the industry. Uh, let's start by just reminding us about some of the, the key features that were involved in going from 2.0 to 2.1. Sure, yeah, it, it was a big uh, increase in capabilities. Uh, first of all, with speed, uh, we went from 18 gigabits per second to, to 48 gigabits per second or up to 48 uh, with a technology called uh, FRL or fixed rate link, uh, which can operate up to uh, 12 gigabits uh, per lane and there's four lanes. So you get to 48 gigabits per second total or potentially some lower numbers is you don't, you don't always need that full 48 gigabits like for 4K or uh, you don't need as much. Um, and FRL includes a, a technology called link training, which is a, a negotiation between the source device and the display to make sure that the link is a high quality and uh, that you're getting a, you know, a error free uh, transmission across that link at whatever speed it decides to run at uh, based on the quality of the connection you get. Uh, and then there's eARC, which is the enhanced audio return channel. So we had ARC in the past. EARC really brings that up to a much higher uh, level with uh, high quality uh, audio and in terms of the, the, the DTS, True HD, Master Audio, those, those kinds of things. Um, and then there's some gaming related features. Uh, ALLM uh, is auto low latency mode. So that allows the, the source device, like a game console, to uh, tell the, the display to automatically switch into game mode. So the user doesn't have to go in necessarily into their TV's menu anymore and select game mode when they want to play a game and then go back and turn it off and, and whenever they want to watch uh, streaming video. Now the game console or other source devices can automatically switch back and forth uh, with the auto low latency mode or ALM. And VRR is also there for gaming, which is variable refresh rate. So that's a technology used again in gaming where uh, when the some games can't always render at the full refresh rate of the HDMI interface, uh, then a variable rate allows you to get a motion shutter uh, reduction, uh, much smoother looking uh, gaming uh, motion quality. So lots of good stuff in there uh, in, in the 2.1 spec. Right, so definitely displays have been a big part of this. In terms of displays, uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how sort of the product mapping has gone, the road mapping with availability of products uh, in terms of what's available now and are they fully capable of all the features? Well, we've had some of the features that were, um, you know, not related to upgrading the speed uh, that came out earlier, right? So those were the features around the, uh, the ALM and the VRR. Uh, those work at any speed HDMI, so th those have been shipping for a while in some of the displays and TVs. Uh, eARC also, uh, you know, it, it works over um, what used to be called the, the uh, well, another channel, the Ethernet channel, but it's really the eARC channel. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that has also been out now for uh, a while uh, in TVs and uh, in uh, AVRs. Uh, so th those were shipping uh, already. 
the FRL related stuff, the things that take us up to, uh, you know, up to 48 gigabits, uh, those are, are more just coming out now. Uh, we're starting to see uh, more sources and sinks, uh, you know, coming out uh, around now and, and sort of in the balance of 2020 and into 2021 that are going to focus on, on bringing those capabilities to the market. Okay. And so pretty much all the TVs, all the uh, audio video receivers that are out, uh, soundbar products, things like that, are those all, they're all basically spec to uh, 2.1 at this point? Oh, I don't think all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, really, uh, you know, uh, anyone looking at products needs to be sure they're looking for uh, the, uh, the branding of things like eARC and ALM and VRR. They should be feature name branding somewhere on the product specifications. And in terms of bandwidths, I think the way to look for things like uh, FRL and, and how fast it goes is to look for 4K 120 or 8K 60 branding on the HDMI interface spec. Okay. So if it says 8K60 uh, as part of the HDMI interface specifications, then you know that it's FRL. Or the same with 4K120, then you know it's FRL. Um, and, and that way you're, you're sure that uh, you're getting that higher quality interface in the product. Okay, yeah, I mean, certainly 8K TVs have just started hitting the market. We're hearing more about them. I'm sure 2021 will be a lot of 8K coming out. So mm -hmm. integrators uh, kind of need to do their homework and look for these certain certain details. Yeah, look for the AK60 labeling on the HDMI interface. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, in terms of uh, cables, that's been you know obviously the, the kind of the glue that holds the systems together for HDMI. Um, so let's talk about those in that area. Uh, back in January, the HDMI Forum announced a mandatory certification program, right, in which mm -hmm. cables needed to to pass testing at the uh, HDMI authorized testing centers. Can you yep. talk a little bit just about uh, what those testing centers are all about and what's involved with these uh, certifications? Sure, well, um, you know, increasing from 18 gigabits per second to 48 gigabits per second required a new cable specification. Um, and, you know, we wanted to make sure that all the cables that got to market that claimed to be ultra high speed or UHS were really ultra high speed and, 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 and could really get to 48 gigabits. And, you know, we're, we've been aware that there's been some confusion in the market in the past with cable quality. There was a previous program around premium to ensure you got to, to 18 gigabits per second. Uh, that was an optional uh, program, the premium cable certification. Uh, so you know it was great to look for, uh, but you did see some cables that could get to 18 gigabytes that that weren't uh, gigabits that weren't uh, weren't premium certified. With the UHS, uh, we've made it a mandatory thing now. So it's now every cable has to go uh, every cable design uh, at every cable length uh, has to go to an HDMI forum authorized test center. So these are. Uh, Areas that, you know, they, they were already used by HDMI sources and HDMI syncs to test their capabilities. Now the cables go there as well. And they test uh, across the frequency range uh, all the way up to the, the 12 gigabits per second per channel or 48 gigabits total. Uh, they test that they can carry the, the signals with full quality. Uh, and there's also an important aspect to it around EMI or electromagnetic interference. Uh, so the, the UHS cables are specified to have very low interference with other devices that are working on radio bands related to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Uh, so part of the certification program is to actually take the cables into uh, special chambers that are used to detect electromagnetic radiation coming out of the cables while they're, they're operating at, at various um, HDMI speeds and ensure that they're well shielded, right? So that they, they have good grounding and shielding around the connectors and, and the, the shrouds around the connectors and along the cable itself. Um, so yeah, it, it's all uh, part of the certification program. Um, and it's actually not just a certification program, it's also uh, an ongoing compliance program. So part of the UHS branding is that there will be random sampling take place in the marketplace. So we'll, we'll go out into the markets at various locations around the world, uh, you know, buy some, some UHS branded labeled with, with our certification label on them cables and bring them back in for further testing and make sure that 
you know, there's ongoing quality being maintained in the marketplace. Uh, Basically, you're going to be doing like like pop quizzes for some <laughs> for some of these uh, places some, to make yeah. sure that there is yeah. compliance. Yeah, that's right. Gotcha. So yeah, I know that um, that you guys also you just announced, I believe it was last month, that the the UHS cable certification certification labels are available. Um, that's right. So does that sort of speak to how the certification program has been going in terms of you know, having a whole lot of manufacturers go through it and put their cables through the rigors? Yeah, yeah, we've had a number of manufacturers go through now and uh, labels are starting to be rolled out. So, you know, you, you should see them starting to appear in the marketplace because it does take a, you know, maybe two, three months to, to get them into the actual uh, retail market. Uh, but by the end of the 2020, we, we do expect that you'll, you'll start to see them on the shelves. And, you know, anyone looking to install an HDMI system uh, at, you know, with the 2.1 capabilities uh, should definitely look for the UHS label, uh, which is a special label with a, a QR code and a hologram. And, and uh, there's also an application you can download for phone, for Android or Apple phones. Uh, and you can scan the label with your camera and it'll bring up a report saying this is a certified cable and give you a little bit of detail about exactly what length it's supposed to be uh, and uh, you know who the manufacturer was and so forth so you can be sure that you're actually picking up and buying a product that that is claiming to be okay that makes a lot of sense and i know even in the past we've heard things about you know counterfeit cables coming in that really you know, knock off cables things like that um is all did all that kind of influence the the thinking behind this the certification program and really um trying to clear up a lot of you know confusion that might be out there for the guys who are installing these products oh certainly that was one aspect of it there were there were a lot of things but yeah we, we really want to make sure that the, the people doing the installations are having confidence in the cables that they're they're acquiring yeah and we're, we're glad that we're able to do that david in terms of that product availability you know uh, as we said the avrs have been out for a bit now tvs uh, you know the sinks have been out for a bit now uh, for our readers who might be wondering, you know, why, why have the cables, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the big cog in the HDMI 2.1, uh, why has that process taken so long? What does the HDMI forum have to say about that in terms of, hey, you know, cables are, are finally here, but, but why was the, it, you know, a bit, a bit of a, a long haul between 2.0 and 2.1 for that? You, you meant between the 2.1 spec release and now, I think. Right, exactly. Not really related to 2.0. Um, well, I, I think there's a couple aspects of that. Uh, one is, you know, the, the features that I talked about earlier, like eARC and ALM and VRR, they didn't require the new cable. And, and they're, that's most of what's released in the market so far with 2.1 capability are those things that actually weren't dependent on the new cable. It's the higher link rates around 4K 120 and 8K 60 that do require uh, the, the new cable infrastructure. And that's all really coming to market around the same time, right? So we've got the source devices, the first ones that are gonna be doing uh, 4K 120 are gonna be coming out in November, 2020. And, and that's the new generation game consoles, the, the, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X and Series uh, S. Um, those, those are all coming out in, in uh, you know, November, 2020. Uh, so, and then on the, uh, the display side, uh, that's around the same time. It's, it's the 2020 generation, the, the, the TVs coming out around now in the fourth quarter of 2020 that are really the ones that are going to support the 4K 120 and 8K 60 native inputs. So actually, you know, when you, yeah, there was a delay of a few years, but really everything's coming together at the same time in terms of getting the interface moved uh, into the FRL protocol and beyond the 18 gigabits per second that we had with TMDS protocol. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So everything's kind of confluencing and, uh, yep. and it's, it's an exciting time for installers to be putting together these systems for their customers. Uh, like you said, with the gaming consoles coming out with the, you know, the, the 4K and especially the 8K TVs that are you know, more out on the marketplace, certainly. In terms of going from there into, uh, into 2020, 2021, um, what do you guys anticipate will be, you know, some big things on the horizon going even from now and uh, 
in terms of going next year for HDMI Forum? Well, I mean, in terms of the 2.1 deployment, we'll definitely start to see a higher uptake, uh, both in source devices, you know, it'll go beyond just game consoles into mm -hmm. expect many other classes of source devices uh, in 2021. And, and, and in TVs, I think we're just going to see broader adoption of, of the FRL, uh, you know, uh, to, to move you up to 4K 120 or 8K 60. Uh, the other thing that uh, is, is still on the sort of horizon coming with HDMI 2.1 is the compression aspect. So it also supports something called display stream compression, uh, which is a very, uh, you know, low overhead, high quality compression that allows us to get uh, even higher bandwidths uh, than 8K60. Well, actually, uh, it gets 8K60 with less chroma compression. Uh, so you can get a format called 444. 8K60 over uh, with DSC. And so if you're looking at applications that are not so video centric, um, then getting the compression in there in the future is gonna be interesting. Uh, it also, uh, when those products come out, uh, it may be possible to then look at what can happen on a slower speed cable, right? So if you're facing a situation where you've got a premium cable already installed in the wall, for example, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to get necessarily uh, 4K120 or 8K60 over that premium cable. Maybe you can. With link training, maybe you're going to be able to find that that's actually a really great premium cable that can go up to more than 18 gigabits per second. We'll see. Uh, but with the compression aspect, once your source device and sync device are both supporting the compression, uh, then they're going to be able to get uh, things like 4K120 actually over a premium cable guaranteed. Uh, so that's another aspect is, you know, we, we do expect to see uh, the compression uh, products uh, come out soon too. Gotcha. And in terms of the cables, were we talking about both passive and active optical cables? Well, the, the current uh, certification program is for passive cables, and we're expecting to see those up to five meters uh, with passive certification. Uh, the active optical cables are definitely uh, very interesting for us, and, and we're working hard on, on expanding the certification program to the active uh, converter cables as well, so, so stay tuned on that. Great, so that'll just be another thing that's kind of looking on the horizon um, yeah. for these guys, because we certainly know how they like to install those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in terms just, you know, finally, in, uh, you know, system reliability, obviously that's a thing that we hear a lot about at CE Pro from installers who are out there in the field. Uh, you know, certainly it was big when the, the 2.1 spec was announced and then they began, you know, really kind of working system designs with some of the products that were coming out. Uh, what does HDMI Forum have to say in terms of just, hey, best practices out there for integrators when you're in the field that you're going to know that your systems just work because that's customers want to hear hey we just want it we just want it to work what would you say in terms of best practices for them well i think uh, obviously looking for certification in the products is the first step bro. you know and with the cables looking for the cable certification with the uhs label is, is clearly step one um and then you know with the 2.1 frl protocol with link training that i got you know touched on earlier uh, you know, that's supposed to, it will be helping us with, with ensuring we're getting quality because, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a case where uh, during the link training phase, um, you know, the sync, the, the TV is able to respond to the source and say, I, I'm, I'm getting a good signal or I'm not getting a good signal. And they negotiate on how to, you know, come up to the point where they're really getting an error-free connection between the two devices. And, you know, that means that if, for example, uh, it's not a UHS cable, um, and it's not capable of the full speed that the source and sync are capable of, then there's an automatic training down to the, the speed limit that that cable is actually able to, to support. Uh, and, you know, that's going to solve a lot of problems, uh, I think, in terms of user experience. Uh, it doesn't necessarily solve the problem of, I, I bought a uh, uh, AK60 source and an AK60 destination, I plugged them together, I'm not getting AK60 because my cable isn't a UHS cable. That's still an experience that, you know, has to be resolved through things like on-screen displays that tell you that, you know, you're currently in 4K mode and 8K mode and so forth like that. Um, but it, it, I think it's going to help people understand that, uh, you know, 
the, the real message is, uh, if you're seeing a case like that, first thing is check your cable and, and get a UHS cable. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So it, it certainly, uh, we'll get to have that kind of, uh, that seal of approval on the cable side of things uh, to go yep. with the whole system, exactly. Great. Well, David Glenn, thank you very much for being with us. It's a, a HDMI is always a popular subject with our readership. It's also always a kind of a little tricky subject with our readership. So we really, really appreciate your time and clarifying some of this stuff and, and, and helping our installer base out. Oh, my pleasure, Arlen. Uh, anytime and uh, look forward to uh, hearing again from you soon. All right. Great. Thank you very much, David. We appreciate it.